Hey everybody, this is Michael and Chris. Welcome to this episode of Dodgeball Marketing. This is episode number 27. We're going to talk about how to optimize your LinkedIn page for SEO. Uh, LinkedIn's really great, Chris. Let's, uh, let's get into this. We want to give some real nuts and bolts for how people can make their LinkedIn page uh, whether it's their personal profile or their company pages. Yeah, Any, we're going to go back and forth influence. between the two. We're going to talk about all of it. But let's start off with this. Choosing keywords for a tagline, for other stuff. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the tagline, if, you've, um, if you're watching this, you probably have a LinkedIn profile. And LinkedIn is really just on a rocket ship right now in terms of organic yeah. reach, in terms of engagement, in terms of number of people uh, you know regularly signing in so and I know you use it a lot Michael with the, the videos really that you excited post. about LinkedIn this year um, so it's great and it's still still a great opportunity out there um, but um, first let's talk about uh, tagline now if you have if uh, you have a LinkedIn profile you know that you can put a tagline right underneath and that and that gets viewed anywhere where your profile is shown either on the platform or off the platform mm -hmm. in search engine results um, that will show along with it so um, if you look at mine, I think mine, it says, oh, I clicked off my profile. It says marketing expert, Facebook ads, Google mm -hmm. ads, uh, something like that. So it's really any anytime you see your name shown up, um, what you want to be associated with that. So um, it's a great opportunity to put in... Um, you know, do some keyword research on maybe what people are searching for. If you're an individual, um, maybe people are searching for um, PHP developer, Shopify developer, mm -hmm. if that's what you do. So figure out kind of what people are um, looking for when they're looking for your services and go ahead and put that, you know, pick things that have, you can use tools like Instagram Rush and other keyword research tools to see, you know, what's, what's kind of getting more volume. And um, people are going to search for that. So people might search for, if I was a Shopify developer, people might be searching for a Nashville Shopify developer. Well, mm -hmm. if I had Nashville Shopify developer in my profile, um, mm -hmm. I, I would have a chance of popping up there with my LinkedIn profile and potentially get a job as a shop doing Shopify development um, if people search for that. Yeah, so, and, and of course, if you have your URL on your company profile, we'll talk about some more nuts and bolts stuff as we go. But sure. these keywords are essentially being associated with the target URL. So exactly. there's a reason we're doing all this for in thinking about SEO. Yeah, and it all gets indexed by the search engine. It tells the search engine what this uh, company or person is about, mm -hmm. what they do, and what they're associated with. So step one, do a little bit of keyword research and find terms that are most relevant to you and most searched by users and put that in your uh, tagline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're, we're sort of doing all those things that you just described. We're, we're using right now online marketing to grow your business period, based in Nashville team. There you go. You've got, so you've got the ge yeah. geographic modifier there. Yeah, we, we did that geographic. We, we serve clients all across the United States, but there's a little bit of uh, wanting to make sure that, you know, we're not hiding the fact that we're somewhere. Well, and, and people yeah. still search for local, even though, even though you do a business that um, mm -hmm. can serve anyone anywhere and it's digital, people yeah. still will want to search within Nashville companies in their community. So yeah. that's important, I think, to yeah. include that. Cool. Uh, next up. So yeah, write a detailed LinkedIn about section. Uh, all of the text that's on your LinkedIn profile, whether it's your personal profile or your company page, all of this is being indexed and added to search engines and being associated with the target URL of the page. And if you have your URL on your profile, which you absolutely should, you're using all of this text real estate as keyword content to associate that off-site link with the destination website. And of course, if you've gotten to know anything about SEO or you've been listening to any of the Dodgeball Marketing podcasts or you know, you've ever talked to Chris at Bullhorn Media or me at GoEps, you know that these inbound links are really valuable. So all of this real estate that LinkedIn gives us is really good. I would say short of your personal name or your company name, Everything else is up for grabs. If you're a marketing VP or a, a business development executive and your company has some old tagline that really doesn't have any good keywords, maybe in the branding conversations you can kind of say, hey guys, we want to have a marketing tagline that's different than our brand tagline. We have our logo and we have, uh, you know, maybe Sherwin-Williams paint the world. Mm -hmm. Paint the world doesn't have any keywords. <laughs> it could be Sherwin-Williams uh, manufacturing the best products for painters to grow their business. There you go. Isn't you know, it cover some, the world in paint? Cover the world in paint. It's the worst it's, tagline well, I've ever no, heard. Hey, hey, Sherman Williams is watching. <laughs> so uh, no offense, Sherman Williams, talk to us. We will do a branding project just for you. Actually, we know a number of people have attacked that brand over the years. 
Uh, Sherwin Williams, we will we'll do a free consultation session <laughs> to discuss the problems of uh, cover the world. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a horrific image. It's the paint over the globe. <laughs> Just it's, direct, it, it, so many deaths. It might be a little, <laughs> might be a little dated. It might be a little dated. Uh, we, we know that conversation is already happening. Uh, but yes, all of this outside of the your if it's your personal page, outside of your name or your company name, those are areas where these are real handles of am I in the right place? So yeah. there's some sort of higher order or actually actually lower order thinking things that need to happen with names outside of that everything needs to be considered in relationship to the lens of keywords and this is not about keyword stuffing this is about using appropriate benefits oriented language that matches how your audience is thinking about this content so your about section that's really an area to make sure that your all of your key services are represented nobody cares about the history of the company you don't have to have the history in there for people to sort through and get to what you're doing. Start with what you're doing for people that really matters. Great. Chris, Chris tell us, tell us about the next thing. Yeah. So update LinkedIn regularly with fresh content. Now there's two ways to update with content. One is the video text image posts, which show up in the feed, which you do a lot of. And I do, Used to do a lot of, and need to start doing again. Yep. And, and the second, I, I was one, imitating you. I, I'm, second, yeah. <laughs> I need to just re-imitate you. That was imitating yeah. me. Um, so, so that's one that's one way to get out there. And like I said before, the organic reach on LinkedIn is still um, phenomenal. You could open up a brand new account, and if you have a really great post that really strikes a nerve, you can have you know four connections and get seen by thousands and thousands of people. That's how mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like Facebook was in 2013. You know, mm -hmm. it's just wide open. Uh, they haven't they haven't hampered it back in the same way that Facebook has. So yeah, organic content. There's still if if you make a good good posts that are good content that people want to consume and comment, engage with, um, there's a huge amount of opportunity for um, reach. Um, secondly, mm -hmm. and this goes back to, that's less about search engines, more about platform stuff. Mm -hmm. um, secondly is LinkedIn articles. Now, articles are, it's a separate area of LinkedIn you can go to to write uh, an article. You can write a full article, include pictures and uh, links and uh, embeds and other types of things. Now, articles don't get a lot of play on the platform. Um, I've tried writing articles they just don't show up. Mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn just d prefers the posts and the videos um, to, to show up in the feed. But what is important with articles is they do get indexed by uh, Google mm -hmm. and the other search engines. And so if you write a, a, a great article, long, thorough, that's valuable, provides good content, um, and it gets decent uh, engagement with people within the platform, even though it, they hamper it, like I said, mm -hmm. um, that will show up on... Google search results. I've, I've done many searches trying to solve a specific problem with uh, digital advertising. And in the top 10 results was somebody posted a LinkedIn article and I clicked on it, clicked on their profile, checked them out. So it's, it's just an avenue, um, you know, beyond what we talked about in terms of like simple things like tagline and description to really get your um, thoughts out there and your expertise out there in a way that really um, regular posts on the platform don't allow. Search engines really focus on those articles yeah. in, a, in a bigger way than posts. So let's recap. There's a little bit of a, an X, Y axis here. You've got personal pages and company pages, and then you've got posts and articles. Which I believe posts can only be done by individuals. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that a company, I, I might be wrong on that, actually. Yeah. We need to check on that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if a company can actually author a post. I think people author posts, and then mm -hmm. you can a company can share it, maybe. But the, the point is, uh, it's great content, um, great fodder for a search engine. They do get indexed, they do get placement, and they do get clicked on. Yeah, we've played around with moving some blog content and some blog momentum over to LinkedIn, and we've just never gotten the traction from it to make it a real uh, a real standard for us. Uh, mm -hmm. but we, we've tested that out where, uh, whereas lately, uh, with posts, yeah, it's, um, it, it's, you know, t taken off yeah. It's, it, yeah, as people have been home and on social media more, uh, with COVID it's, it's really, and as people are looking to connect and do things online, whereas they used to do it more in physical interactions, uh, LinkedIn is, is really LinkedIn and zoom are really kind of the rock stars right now. I think zoom's gotten more attention because it's been part of a real public experience, but LinkedIn has, um, has really filled in a gap during COVID. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, uh, yeah. Next up. So uh, keeping company info accurate on LinkedIn is really important. So keep your company info accurate. Um, and this is this is a basic 
strategy of SEO. So this applies not just to LinkedIn, but to any platforms where you have listings, profiles. And there, there are limitations to what you can do with a lot of websites. Like on a lot of websites, you can't go in and just start pasting uh, the nice notes that your customers sent you as a review. Um, and with some sites, you can't even you know, start driving traffic to get more reviews. Uh, and another example of where it's really tough is with Wikipedia. You can't uh, necessarily go and just start putting a lot of sales content on Wikipedia. It'll get struck, struck out right away. But there is something that you can have a lot of control over uh, that you need to have a process in to review monthly or quarterly and make sure you have really good discipline about. And that is your basic business info. This is going to include your hours of operation, your URL, your uh, <clears throat> locations. Um, and then when you get uh, beyond LinkedIn over to places like Google My Business, they're adding new features like um, ways that you can interact or use services uh, during the pandemic. So think about uh, LinkedIn as an anchor and a, and a real primary point of contact for your customers understanding the basics about what you're doing, but you can also extrapolate this kind of thinking out to your other channels. And we really recommend um, at a minimum uh, once a quarter doing just a, a check and, and having uh, a list of all the different URLs or the, all the different accounts that somebody just needs to go and put eyeballs on and make sure okay. And then for just making sure, seeing how you appear in search results, uh, doing doing a check on schedule at least once a month. Uh, so going out to Google and doing a search, and so this could this could include something like your company name plus the word LinkedIn, and seeing how that looks in search results, or your company name, and then looking at your Google My Business profile, or your company name in your city if you're a regional or, or local provider. So thinking about keeping company info accurate, this is really important. Um, we often think of LinkedIn as one of the things that the CFO is going to go through before they sign the big contract. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a place to see if people have their stuff together. If they're organized, if they're managing proactively their, their listings and their presence on the internet. And you really don't want uh, that CFO who has veto power over your million dollar proposal to um, go through and say, yeah, this is a little sloppy. You really want them to have no catch, no concerns, uh, no unclaimed listings, no uh, weird uh, errors or an old URL and, you know, if it, oh yeah, it redirects, it's no problem. We use it for our email or something. No, no, no. Whatever your marketing face is, have everything really clean and tight and populated on your LinkedIn profile. That's great. Yeah. And, and our, and our last thing about LinkedIn here, and this kind of is associated with that whole vetting process yeah. is, um, choose high quality images for your company LinkedIn page. And so we're, um, we're thinking photos of the office, teammates, events, ways that you're involved in the community. And um, use real photos. Go go out go out and have some real photos made. Don't use stock images if you can help it. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of goes back to I mean, for me, I think primarily the primary reason to to include photos, make make them good photos and real photos, is that vetting process. You know, it's not just potential clients that are looking at your LinkedIn page. It's going to be um, investors that are trying to suss out a company, like if they're looking to invest in a company, like, well, you told us you have X number of employees, how many do you actually have? Make sure mm -hmm. all of your make sure all of your employees are linked up and so they'll yeah. show under number of employees. And make sure they look good. Make sure they look good, yeah. If you and make sure none of them have a weird um, profile image where they're like selfie with a yeah. sun behind them or something. Yeah, if, if the photos of your team members that you're asking people to trust that you've on your website presented as like, these are this is our team, this is us, and they get to the LinkedIn uh, directory and they're kind of poking around and they're seeing high school prom photos, you've kind of missed the boat. <laughs> you, and right. there's, and it's, a reason, it's a reasonable thing if somebody's on staff with a company, just to have a little bit of expectation there. So yeah, cho choose your images with the, with the uh, perception that um, it's not just customers, potential customers. It's going to be investors that are looking to invest in your mm. company or uh, potential employees. Uh, you know, LinkedIn is a place where it, you know your next your next uh, important piece of talent is going to come from, maybe. And so, so they're going to look at employees. They're going to look at the job titles of employees. They're going to look at the photos of the space that you're in or the events that you attend and so forth. They're going to use that as information. And so you don't want to have, to your, to your thing earlier, like you don't mm -hmm. want to have something there that's going to make them go like, oh, this, do I really want to work here? They don't mm -hmm. have their stuff together. So it's all part of this package of how you present yourself to the world. And uh, it's important to uh, consider. So high quality photos and uh, do it with the intention that not Auth just employees. Authentic, authentic, authentic images high quality, consistent publishing of posts, 
images that reinforce your message and your brand, not detract from it. Yep. Perfect. Um, and that's all we have. Good. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're bad at outros. It's like, <laughs> yeah. End of uh, podcast. Yeah, end of podcast now. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you on the next one. See you on the next one.